Harvard University was founded in Cambridge, Massachusetts by the Great and General Court of the Massachusetts Bay Colony and opened for instruction two years later. Harvard University was named in 1639 for clergyman John Harvard, its first benefactor. At first lacking substantial endowments and existing on gifts from individuals and the general court, Harvard gradually acquired considerable autonomy and private financial support, becoming a chartered university in 1780. Today, it has the largest private endowment of any university in the world. The undergraduate elective system was replaced in 1979 by a core curriculum intended to prepare well-educated men and women for the challenges of modern life. Students are now required to take courses for the equivalent of an academic year in each of five areas. Literature and arts, history, social analysis, and moral reasoning, science and foreign cultures. In addition, students must spend roughly the equivalent of two years on courses in a field of concentration and one year on elective courses. Students must also demonstrate competence in writing, mathematics, and a foreign language. During their freshman year, students live in halls within Harvard Yard a walled enclosure containing several structures from the early 18th century, now used as dormitories, dining facilities, libraries, and classrooms. And Aaron, what's uh, campus life like here at Harvard? It's exciting. Um, there's a lot of interesting things always going on here. Um, a lot of the top scholars and research in the world um, happens here. Um, it's a very exciting town, a lot of cultural events. And it's also very stressful. It's a very stressful place. Is school real hard? Uh, yeah, it's hard. You find it a lot more difficult than Santa Barbara, I'm sure. Um, it's more just graduate school, it's hard. Okay. Thank you so much. What would you say differentiates Harvard as a university from the standpoint of what it has to offer in terms of programs or the location or, I mean, what do you think uh, are some of the key well, differentiators? Well, it's a, it's a university that, that, that really is uh, extraordinary in terms of the consistency of its excellence uh, amongst the faculty, amongst the students, and its intense regard for excellence. And it's a place in which people can do an enormous amount of work and be in an, in an environment in which there's an enormous amount going on that is of excellent quality, both in the university and outside. You asked about, you know, Boston, let's say. And I think Cambridge and Boston are remarkable as places in which what people learn in the classroom can be elaborated, tested, expanded. I mean, if you're taking an art history course, you've got great museums. If you're taking a music course, you've got a great symphony orchestra and plenty of other musical places. Uh, if you're taking courses in urban design, you've got a city that is very much busy transforming itself in major engineering ways. In other words, it's a place that's vital, complex, manifold, and uh, susceptible to a lot of inquiry. Would you have any particular advice for any students uh, coming or looking at coming to the university, uh, either in terms of what they should be doing to prepare or things to think about uh, in coming? I, um, well, I think they have to get a sense of who they are as persons and, and what sorts of ingredients they are looking for, both as students but as just human beings, you know, what sorts of things satisfy them. Uh, and I mean that fairly basically. If somebody is, is, is completely in love with wide open scenery and a wilderness, then it doesn't make sense to come here. You know, it makes sense to go to some place in Colorado or New Mexico or Arizona. Um, so they have to, the first thing I would say is just get a little sense of who they are and what their needs are. Obviously, if they have developed interests intellectually, it makes sense to go to a place where they know that those interests are are well served. In your opinion, what do you think Harvard is strongest at from a program standpoint? I think they're incredibly strong just about all over the place, you know. I mean, the arts and sciences are very strong. Obviously, you're gearing this more towards undergraduates, right? Yes. So that tends to be where they'll be coming in, but they're strong in all kinds of fields. Among many notable alumni are the men of letters such as Ralph Waldo Emerson, Henry David Thoreau, James Russell Lowell, Oliver Wendell Holmes, Robert Frost, and T.S. Eliot. More U.S. presidents have attended Harvard than any other college. John Adams, John Quincy Adams, Theodore Roosevelt, and John F. Kennedy. A sixth, Rutherford B. Hayes, was a graduate of Harvard Law School. 
Etched deep into the roots of the United States, Harvard University is governed by a corporation known as the President and Fellows of Harvard College, the oldest corporation in the United States.